So, I have two cans of soda. I have a regular can of soda, and I have a diet can of soda. Okay. So we're gonna take this one, and I wanna ask you, do you think it's gonna sink or float? Do you think this one will sink or float? This one will sink. Okay, here, drop it in. Does it sink or float? Sink. Okay. All right. So here's the diet. Do you think it's gonna sink or float? Do you I think, think this that one will float. Yeah. No. Oh. Float. Okay. Float. Float. Okay. Drop it in. Then I'm gonna say the diet coke floats. All right, it does. Okay, my question. Why do you think the diet soda floats but the regular soda sinks? I always thought it was the stuff that's in the in the diet that makes it float. Because it's diet, and I hope when I drink diet, I'll float away too. <laughs> it did. It did get me different. The, the normal one has one, 190 calories, this one has so the calories are what make it sink? Maybe. <laughs> it's a question that I didn't know was a question. But it was something that I'd always wondered every time I saw a cooler full of soda. If I wanted the regular stuff, I'd have to dive down into the icy water to get it and not just grab something off the top. Which was a little confusing. I mean, they're both the same size cans. They both have the same amount of liquid in them. But one sinks and one floats. But why does diet soda float? To find out the answer, I went back to the University of Tulsa to talk to physicist Jerry McCoy to find out what's going on. You know when something is going to float or sink based on its density. Now, density is the mass of an object divided by its volume, mass per unit volume. If the density of the object is more than that of water, it's going to sink. If the density is less than water, it's not going to sink, it's going to float somehow. Just to illustrate that, I've got two identically sized balls, but this is made of foam, so it's got less mass, but it's packed in the exact same volume as this golf ball. Same volume, but more mass. And you can see what happens. The density of this is greater than water, so I know that it's gonna sink, as every golfer who's ever hit a ball into the pond knows. You put it in, and down it goes to the bottom. Yeah. Its density is greater, and actually I measured it. The density of this is about 1.2 grams per cubic centimeter. The density of this ball is about 0.3, much less than the density of the water. So when you set it in there, it floats. So the first thing that you know is some, you, you automatically know whether something is going to sink or float based on its density relative to water. Water's density is one gram per, a gram per cubic centimeter. If the object has a greater density than water, greater than one gram per cubic centimeter, it's going to sink like the golf ball did because yeah. it was one point whatever. This is going to float because it's less. Understanding the principles of what makes something float or sink, I have to go back to that original question of why diet soda floats and regular soda sinks. What, what stuff is in the diet that would make it float? Other things than sugar. That difference being, of course, sugar. The average 12 ounce can of soda has about 40 grams of sugar in it, give or take, depending on which brand you drink. Now that 40 grams is equal to about 10 sugar packets like you'd find in a restaurant, or 10 sugar cubes if you want to think of it that way. Now compare that 40 grams of sugar to the roughly 180 milligrams of aspartame that you would find in diet soda. That 40 grams of sugar makes the regular soda denser than its diet alternative. And so because of that difference in density, regular soda will sink and diet soda will float. Now, that's how you know whether or not something's gonna sink or float based on its density. But let's drill down a little bit more to figure out why things float in the first place. Well, this was actually discovered by an ancient um, uh, classical scientist, a guy named Archimedes, and almost everybody's heard that name before. And he discovered something interesting, and that is that objects experience an upward buoyant force and that buoyant force is equal to how much water the object displaces. So think about this. When I put this down in the water, it's pushing water out of its way to occupy that space in the water. Yeah. If you were to grab that amount of water that it's pushing aside and weigh it, that's how much it's pushing up on this ball. If 
the ball weighs more than that displaced water is going to sink. That's what Archimedes found. Yeah. If the ball weighs less than that displaced water, then the buoyant force is going to be greater and it's going to push it up. And you have a little bit of a sense of this every time you dive into a swimming pool because when the, the deeper you go, you feel the pressure of the water on you the further down you go. And it turns out the difference in the pressure from the bottom to the top of the object is what creates the buoyant force that pushes the object up. So in any case, Archimedes actually used this uh, at the king's behest. Somebody, uh, he had taken some gold to a goldsmith, so the legend goes, to fashion it into a votive crown for the temple. And it comes back and he wasn't convinced that uh, the, the, uh, you know, the goldsmith had, had uh, not siphoned off some of his gold for his own personal use. And so Archimedes was uh, purported to have figured out that you could test and figure out what the density was based on submerging it in water. And that's where he came up with his principle. And by the way, also found out that the goldsmith was cheating him and who knows what happened to him. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Now that I understand why died sort of floats, I had to ask the question, well, what about humans? Do humans sink or float? Yeah. Well, you know, interestingly, Humans are mostly water, and so um, it's right on the margin. And matter of fact, you may have had the experience of being in a pool. If you take a deep breath and hold it, you'll float. However, if you exhale all that air, you tend to sink. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is that when you take a big breath, you're displacing more water. There's more of a buoyant force holding you up. When you exhale that air, you're occupying less water displacing less water in the pool, less buoyant force, and down you go. So you're right on the border between sinking and floating. And you can actually adjust that by taking in a breath or exhaling a breath. Of course, there is that ultimate question. Is it soda or pop? Well, down here in Oklahoma, we say pop. Yeah. And so the next time you're at a grill or a cookout or just hanging out, and you see that cooler full of soda, and you ever wonder, why does the regular stuff sink and the diet stuff float? Well, now you know. What uh, effect would it have with, uh, if it was salt? So what happens when you put the object in water that has had salt in it, or something like that? The density of that water has increased, and therefore, the displaced fluid weighs more, there's a greater upward force and a more of a tendency to flow. Yeah. So anybody who's ever been in, say, the uh, you know, Salt Lake in, in Utah or uh, the Dead Sea in Israel knows that you can float on the water quite easily, whereas in a swimming pool you might, under the same conditions, sink. Might sink. Yeah.